Okay, everybody, let's have a look up here. Let's have a look up here. Okay, so let's take a let's take a look at people's uh, first uh, first draft figures. And so um, the idea here is let's give some folks some feedback. Um, again, some of the general points are um, the the thing we're trying to test, the hypothesis or the or the trend we're trying to illustrate, whatever the case may be, should be nice and clear, right? Nice and clear. And and we might need to give some explanation, but hopefully the figure, the goal is the figure can stand on its own without any um, verbal interpretation or, or setup, right? That, that, that's the goal that we're always working towards. So for here, for our oil, oil uh, drilling group, is this big enough? Let me, should I make this a uh, little bit bigger maybe? Boom, boom, something like that maybe? Um, okay, cool. So, uh, all right, so this is proportion of people um, who, and proportion is always out of one, so, so that, that's cool, but, but, uh, but uh, so proportion of people that uh, support in blue or are opposed to um, oil, I believe this is offshore oil drilling. And um, so, what do you guys think? Good, bad, helpful? Well, well firstly, what, what's, the, what's the takeaway you see? Is there a trend we see? What's that trend? Yeah, it seemed there seemed to be sort of if we talk about oppose, there seemed to be sort of a fairly consistent uh, number. We kind of jump up a little bit here and then and, and and you know go down a bit, but uh, we jump up a lot now. The the, the caution, um, you know, so to start with, we'll have all the data in there, which is fine, and that's totally that's totally good. Um, do remember that uh, like 2020 was a very weird year, right? Like I don't know how confident. I'm not particularly confident in that data, so it's probably interesting to show, maybe to see if it falls out in the trend area, but it was a massively smaller sample size. It's a different format for collecting because we did that because of the COVID, we had to do it virtualized. And then also in 2021, um, we did about half of them face-to-face, -face, but the other half were also virtualized. Again, those are different from all the other years that we've done this, so yeah, Ben. Absolutely. So Ben's question is, so, so for those things, for those, um, now that could either be a data quality issue or a, or a data commentary issue. It could also be just external factors. This is when the oil spill happened or, or something of that nature. So absolutely. I think, I think, you know, this is just our first stab at a figure, right? But, but certainly that's the kind of stuff we'd want to overlay, maybe with a light gray, you know, something in the background that doesn't dominate, but when people are looking at it, they're like, oh yeah, that's right. Okay, that. So one way you could do that is you could also put the, the total sample size of the number of polls that were taken that year, uh, you know, on, on the top of the bars to, and that would clearly communicate when people are looking across and they're like, you know, a thousand, you know, 1100, whatever, and they get to 2020 and it says like 200 something. They're like, ah, mm, yeah, that was kind of weird. Uh, another way you could do that, or, or yeah, other suggestions or other thoughts for how to communicate that information to a, an audience. One would be to, to, to put some, text on there to explain that. Another might be, uh, might be to add a, a total sample size number on there. What else might we do? Totally, absolutely. So we, we, for most of these, we want to add an error. It, in most cases, we want some measure of the variance. So some measure of the error. So that would also really help. And so what most likely happened is that 2020, the bars would be, you know, the, for most of these, the bars are going to be fairly similar, but that 2020, the bars are going to be wonk, like, you know, super honking big. So that's another way to communicate it. Great. Sebastian? Yeah. Yeah. So we could have a little, a little like call out note that, hey, there's something weird here. And then on another area, give a more detailed explanation of, of the weirdness. That's totally cool. Any other thoughts what we might do for strange years? Another one we could do is, and the way I would do this in practice, is I would generate this figure, but not have 2020, or not have 2020 and 21 there, right? So, so plot everything without it. And then I'd overlay another plot with the 2020 and 2021. So I'd have separate controls for my 
for my default colors and the other ones, and I would maybe make use the same colors on those, but make them trans, you know, mostly transparent. Mm -hmm. So we would see it, but it would clearly visually say, hey, these are there's something there's something standalone or, or standout about this. And there's of course, because this is just like our writing and other things, right? This is an iterative process. Maybe you do all those. Maybe you have the sample size and the error bars, and we make it gray and we and, and then that starts to get a be a really powerful figure right and it's like wow this is great everybody can look at this and they know exactly what's going on they see the caveats they see all that kind of good stuff okay good great awesome okay good for uh and then i'd also say that again uh remember that we're talking about um units over here right uh, or excuse me that, that's not right excuse me, variable the variable here yeah, proportion of people is kind of right, but it's it's um, you could also say something like respondents or something like that. And then in the parentheses, I would probably put in this case, I would put proportion is the is the better way to do it. If we were doing percentage, I would just do a percent symbol. Right. And so, again, it's variable is in the text and in the par parenthetical call out is the, are the units that are used. Um, now, for down here, the uh, X axis. There's nothing wrong with that. That's totally fine. It's so obvious what 2010 is, 2011, 2012, 2013, that this is an example where we don't need to label the variable. So, so given that we're, um, we don't need it, I would encourage you guys to go ahead and leave it off. It's not wrong, but, but it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. So just uh, similar like if we said January, February, March, April, you could say month of the year, but it's sort of, it's pretty, pretty obvious, right? So I think that that's pretty, pretty clear. Okay, good. Cool. All right. Oh, another one that's helpful here, again, are the grid lines. So that, that, that's a nice visual reference. Over here, it's pr without these grid lines, it's pretty easy to figure out that whatever blue bar in 2010 is about 0.475. Yeah? Everybody with me on that? But if we're over here, we're like, what? What's the blue bar in 2021? So as we get farther away from the axis, it gets harder to see. So having those light little guide, you know, background um, recessed into the background, but nevertheless as, as a visual guide, that's a nice quick and dirty to help us eyeball stuff. So those are always, generally speaking, a good thing to do. Okay, cool. Great. Thanks, you guys. Cool. How about my energy group? Let's, can you guys all see this? Let's get that right there. Cool. Okay. Well, first, everybody stare at it for a second. Okay, so tell me what you guys think about this. Peer, peer feedback before we ask our, our group questions. What do you guys think? Yay, nay? Does, does it make sense? Or, or, or let me ask you this. What's the pattern that we see? Or the takeaway? Uh-huh. Okay, cool. So the highest bar is this guy, which is EVs are, you know, a, a positive thing. Cool. Yeah. So a common thing we'll see is is the I, I didn't I don't want to either I, I don't want to or I don't know how to make a call or I'm un, I'm just or sorry. No, okay, so we I guess we didn't have unsure on this one, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. Okay, okay, that's great. So then the question is, uh, that's totally fine. So Ben said that they, they deleted the, 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 so did you use as the um, denominator the total sample size or just the sample size for people that gave us an answer? Just the sample size that gave you an answer. Okay, okay, so, so, so the unsure were, was ignored. So this was of people that had an opinion, yeah. and that, that's okay. We just want to make sure we're clear about that, right? So that it's not all the folks, it's the subset that voiced, that, 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 that made a vote, right? That, that had an active engagement vote. Okay, cool. So good. Um, yeah, I, I like the fact, oh, sorry, other, other feedback. What, what else do people think? Yeah, Jake. It says exploring the connection between one thing and another thing. So shouldn't that axis be like one thing and another thing? Yeah, so, so um, I'd say there's nothing technically wrong with this title, but it'd be better to tell us what the pattern is. Now, in some cases, if, if, there, if it's a complex figure with a lot of stuff, there might be 
one thing going up and one thing going down, and then, you know, so then that gets a little tough. But when we have one variable or one, one factor, generally speaking, we want to interpret that. So the, so the general rule is going to be tell folks what we, what we found, show folks the evidence for what we found, right? So, so it's not like we're trying to trick them into thinking stuff. So the old thinking used to be, the old thinking used to be completely objective, X versus Y, do not say anything, do not put any color in, color is lying. I had a professor one time tell me color is lying. Mm -hmm. um, and, and coloring is, he said coloring is advertising. We're not supposed to be advertising. So we should have all your figures should be black and white. Um, so uh, that is not correct. Uh, I'd say that that generally has been rejected. Um, but, but, you know, we do want to be, we want to be objective here. So we don't want to like hood, if, if it's equivocal what the pattern shows, we don't want to give one possible interpretation as the title and then try to convince people that's the only interpretation. But if it's a clear relationship, then we want to say something like, um, uh, you know, majority of respondents positive, right? Majority of respondents uh, 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 bullish on EVs or positive on EVs or something of that nature, right? Um, and, so, and so that's going to tell people what, what we're doing. But then Jake's point was like, maybe I don't exactly understand it, right? And so, and so the, maybe the percentage here could be something like um, uh, 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 impressions of EVs or something, and then pr proportion or, or some, something of that nature, right? Because percentage is, is really the unit that we're using. It's not, it's not so much the variable. The variable is, 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 how, is how they interpret the, the thing. Oh, okay, good question. Okay, good question. So, so do we need to do that? And I would say uh, as, as a general rule, you don't have to again, but, but right now, the way we're doing this, we have zero, five, 10, right? School. It's like, what is that? If we just had the purple bar, I'd be a little bit like, what is that number, right? Or this uh, beige or whatever the hell that is. Uh, <laughs> orange, brown. <laughs> Orange brown. I don't want to judge the family's colorblind. I don't want to make it, it. But I'm just saying. Okay. So, the, but this guy is it like 18? Is it 17? Is it whatever? And so, by putting the percentage on there, it makes it that much easier for folks to to take it a, to to know precisely the amount. So you don't need to. But generally speaking, if it doesn't detract, that's a, that's usually a good thing to do and helps. It will help with a little bit of clarity for some people. Um, Jake, do you have another question? Okay, it's all good. It's all good. Okay, good. Other feedback. Other, other, other initial thoughts on this on this uh, figure. I think we could, of course, make those bars a little Yes. Yes. So, okay. So one of the classic ones. One of the classic ones we see is. Um, uh, okay. Yeah, so the question is, what's the most effective way to communicate this? For the most part, for the stuff we're ha I'm having you guys do, it's a figure, right? For the most part, they're, 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 a table might work in some cases too, so that that's not out of the realm of possibility. But um, the classic one is somebody said yes, no, or or uh, uh, you know, I don't know, um, uh, yeah, yeah, like a yes, no kind of question, and then you'll be like a bar, and it's super fat, and then it goes to this half, and then no, it's super fat, right? So that's that's sort of the opposite problem where we just sort of squeeze everything into the space. That's not really aesthetically pleasing. Something like this also uh, is, is not bad, but we could have made the same figure by squishing it super together, right? If that was the width that we wanted, that we needed to make these bars. So I would say, so you have control over both the width of the bars in your, in your graphing figure and the spacing between, in this case, the categorical variable. And so generally speaking, I would, I would make the bars wider and probably collapse the space a little bit. I'd kind of I'd kind of do both of those. Cool. Um, other thoughts or other comments? And so, and so, so we have a, so the, there's a couple there's a couple categories of feedback, right? There's one that like, oh, you guys should have error bars, or 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 that label should be this, right? That's pretty much you guys should do that. Um, but then the other ones, like we're talking like like Scarlett's comment is it's a bit of aesthetics, right? It's a bit of aesthetics, and so that is, uh, you know, you know, Kenzie has this view and Ben has that view and da 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 da. da. And your guy's job is to take all of our feedback and make a call. And maybe I'm right, or maybe I just have a weird uh, sensibility. 
But the idea is by showing it to many folks and getting lots of input, I think, you know, if a lot of people say, mm, that's an ugly color, but you love it, you're like, mm, maybe I should have a different color, right? So, so the, the probably should fix this is what you guys should probably fix. But the other aesthetic ones, there's no best answer. You just gotta, you just gotta sort of take the pulse of the community and go forward. Cool, other, other feedback for this one? All right, cool, thanks. How about seafood group? <laughs> What's funny? What's funny about that? <laughs> There's something. No error bar, right? For a percentage, or what do you think? Uh, I would, I would, ideally, I would probably put the error bar on there. Um, yeah, so, so as, much, as much as we can characterize both the central tendency and the variance, I would do that. Um, when we have things that are just yes, no, it, it, those things become problematic because there's no, but, but when we have a range of answers, yeah. Okay, so, um, so somebody tell me what, what we're taking away from our uh, seafood uh, uh, safety perception. Yes. Okay, so the, so, so the one is, so, so uh, the comment here was maybe the unsure isn't as helpful in this context. Okay, what else? Okay, interesting. Okay, so Izzy's suggesting, yes, make it a little simpler, but but, enough, but get rid of the orange as opposed to the pink. Okay. Other other thoughts, other impressions. Well, let me ask a question. So so the first takeaway you guys said was that a lot of people are unsure. Okay, cool. Any other takeaways here? Okay, good. So I believe this is perceived safety of seafood consumption by region in 2023, right, you guys? Okay, good. So we should add that to the descriptor title, whatever, okay. So, so how have they, so, so they've ranked, maybe it's not clear, but so they've ranked these, right? So they've ranked, so the, the Alaska to China um, Alaska there has the highest yeses, has the highest green bar. And then, it, and then the green bars are declining from left to right. So that's, that, that's how they chose to order this, right? Mm -hmm. So that's a, a totally legit way. Are there other ways you could or organize it? What, what might be some other ways of organizing your x-axis here? The, oh, 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 geographic distance? Uh huh. Sure. Okay. So the Cal you could limp the, for example, the Orange County, Santa Barbara, and California could be you know lumped together or or or, or positioned near each other, um, and uh, and maybe you know so Tha Thailand and China are close to each other, but Japan is kind of over here, and so you, you could do a geographic thing. That's another. That's not necessarily right or wrong, but that's another option, right? Cool. Other thoughts or other ideas? Right, right. Yeah, right. So, so I, uh, so I think in the in the thing we have California outside of those areas. That's, that's what it's supposed to be. But, um, but yeah. So, so, so that's also a thing where because those are so closely related, maybe we'd want, you know, if we did do it geographically, California to be first, and then Santa Barbara and Orange County maybe tight in next to it, whereas the other ones might be farther distance apart. So it's sort of like a natural kind of grouping. Right, or, or something of that. We can also do a similar thing to, for that is, which for example, we could do on this one as well, um, is uh, you, know, you can do that with spacing, with, with physical location of the graphical element. You could also do it with some axis help. So we could take a bar, for example, and put a bar underneath these two and say positive, and a bar underneath, underneath these two and say negative. Or we, could, or we could put a bar underneath those three and say, California, or a bar under those including Gulf of Mexico and Alaska and say United States of America or something, right? So we could, we could give some additional, um, you know, guideposts to the folks to help them, um, you know, sort through what the options are. What did you think about like horizontal bar graphs? Or could, like, horizontal 
So the question is, what about horizontal bar graphs? I don't have any problem with them. It's 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 whatever works for you guys. Um, so 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 I, I don't, I'm not against them. I'm not pro them. I'm not anti them. It's just as with all these things, it, a lot of it really does. So there are some rules of thumb about which which type of graph to pick, but then a lot of it's going to come down to how your particular data falls out and how how it's consistent. The other thing is the other one that will matter is um, if we're trying to tell a story what your other figures are. So for example, if, 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 uh, if, we're, if we're talking about like uh, Jake or so, I forget, somebody was talking about doing um, uh, income versus, versus food safety or whatever, right? So we probably want to pick a format or a layout or a, or a, a default graphing frame that's consistent from figure one to figure two to figure three to make it easier for the interpreter to go through that. But on any one particular figure, there might be another optimal design, but, but we would be optimizing for the overall, overall communication. And so that's also a possibility too. And so maybe for those other ones, maybe the horizontal is better. Whereas this one, I don't know if it matters much either way, but if there's a clear reason for say the other figure, then I would go, go with that format so it's easy to see. Other, other, other feedback or other comments? Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. So, like, compared to like this bold color, this is a little bit uh, harder to see. Uh huh. Um, yeah. Uh, there's there's also some general stuff about yes, no. You know, yes, kind of tend to again. This gets into issues with um, with color blindness, but generally speaking, the yes tend to be greenish kind of stuff, and the no's tend to be reddish kind of stuff. That tends to be a more natural fit. You don't have to do that, but. But, but those are some common things. The other one I would say is, um, what are these error? What is the bar? What is the error bar, right? So I suspect you guys just use the stuff that we have, which is the bar is mean, and the error bar is standard error or standard deviation, one or the other. And so you should just say that somewhere. An easy way is just to insert a, a text box and say, uh, you know, something like, means plus or minus one standard error or something like that so that people know ah this is not confidence interval this is or, or you know what is it so we just want to have somewhere in the figure explaining what stuff is again recall that we're labeling the variable here and then the units are are would be in parentheses so the units would be percent but i think this is not percent i think this is proportion right seafood people i think it's proportion yeah so it's okay. If you want to do percent, that's fine, but, but this, is, this is proportion. So, okay, good, cool. Um, and yeah, and so this one, maybe, maybe we could just say regions on this one as opposed to regions listed on the poll kind of thing. Cool, okay, good. How about number next? How about our perspectives group? What do you guys think? Somebody tell me what, we're, what, we're, what the takeaway from this figure is. Yeah, the majority of people are not, correct. The majority of people are not. Okay, cool. Uh, what else? Or, or other impressions? I think this, this guy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now another one. Now, okay, so these so far, we've, we've shown these guys. This is, again, totally legit. Nothing technically wrong with it. But I would say, um, uh, what, in a case like this, where we have these nice bar, we, we have a large block, what I would do is I would insert a text box right here, turn it 90 degrees, and say N-O. And in this case, uh, make it either the same color as the background, this, this gray or, or, or periwinkle, whatever it is, or white. And then I do the same thing here, and I'd say unsure. And I do the same thing here, and I'd say yes. And then it, that would eliminate the need to have a legend, right? Because it would be really clear. Um, that doesn't always work. Sometimes you just need a legend. But where we, when it's a fairly simple thing that we're, you know, yes, no, um, uh, support, unsupportive, what, something like that. Generally speaking, it's going to be much better to leave off that legend because we'll get more real estate. We can make the figure that much bigger. We have more play, space to play with. And we can just embed the label within the graphical element or adjacent to the graphical element. Cool. 
Other thoughts, other feedback for these guys? Okay. Okay. Or like a tax bar that said COVID or something. Uh huh. Okay. Cool. Good. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, right. So, so again, it depends on the message we're trying to say. So either the majority, majority, uh, majority go to the beach or something like that, or um, you know, small but consistent fraction avoid going to beach, something like that, right? Um, uh, yes. Okay. Good. Yeah. 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 Other. Other, and again, this one would be, so again, instead of respondents, maybe it would be, um, uh, you, you could also do it like this. You could also do beach avoidance, parentheses, percentage. And then this could be, instead of yes, no, this could be uh, avoid, or, or sorry, no would, wait, have people avoided going? Um, so, so no would be um, uh, normal attendance and yes, or normal and yes would be like avoid or something like that, right? We could also, we could also help help with the interpretation with that um, by, by modifying those variables too. I would just say like since a lot of their bars are like very close together, uh, it might be helpful like similarly to the, um, to the other group, I'm not sure which one, but they had like the, the top of the bar label with the actual number. Oh, the number, uh-huh. Yeah, it might be a little helpful just because a lot of their bars are really yeah. close together. It's hard to see like what is. Good. Yeah, good, cool. And again, we could we can leave off the just like we could probably leave off the um, legend and get some more uh, real estate here. We could also leave off the word years and get some more real estate without losing any clarity. Cool. All right, great. How about our uh, coastal management attitudes group? Let's see if I can squeeze this here. Okay. How about just like that? Okay. So somebody tell me uh, their impressions of this bad boy. Uh, yeah, sure. So, yeah, all, all the all the um, uh, text could be bigger. Yes, good. Uh, you mean the the uh, the the grid lines back here? Okay. Yeah, I mean sometimes that so they're they're kind of visible on my excuse me on my screen. Sometimes that's a bit of the projector that you're seeing in front of the room. But yeah, yeah, it couldn't hurt to make it a little more, a little, and we can do that a couple different ways, just to be clear. We can change the thickness of the grid line, or the pattern of the grid line, or the color of the grid line. And so that's gonna just be one you would wanna experiment with, and, the, and there's not just one way to make the grid more pop or recede more in the background. Those are all available to you. Molly. Totally. Totally. Right. Mm-hmm. Totally. And I would say that because, uh, like, if we were to use the same format, we actually could could have that longer description, like Molly's asking for, or, or, or interpretation as to what that yes means. That could actually be like in this case with maybe black text, but we could sort of overlay that in the blue one, overlay that in the yellow one, overlay that in the in the green one. Um, as and again, maybe that maybe that's dumb, maybe that doesn't work, but I would try that as an iterative thing. Does this work? And and so when I'm doing all this stuff, when you guys are doing all this stuff, I'm not I'm not editing my figure. I'm making a copy of the figure and making the version two, and then making a copy of version two and making version three. So I can always go back and look and see see what I did. Because maybe sometimes we go down that rabbit hole and then you're like, ah, oh, this is dumb, this is stupid. And then you wanna go, go back to the start, but if you just keep ed editing the same one file, 
you have to recreate it. But by saving copies of it, you can, you can go back and jump back and, and even just do a visual comparison quickly to help you interpret what's the best way. Good, Steve. I was going to say that um, the barcodes, they are already like really saturated, but there's no point in having a black background. It's kind of harsh on the eyes, basically. OK. OK. Um, yeah, I think I think uh, I think we'll we'll probably eventually, if we're going to use some of these in our in our poster, we're going to have a black background because that that'll be the black of the poster. But as a default, you don't have to start that way, right? You can, as, as you're as we're trying to figure out elements, you could have just a regular white background. Um, the other one, and so so black is helpful for the poster final thing. Um, but if you guys are going to be printing these up to share and to go around, definitely don't want a black background. Right? You'll burn through your You'll burn through your uh, printer uh, cartridge in about half a minute. So, um, but but good point. Um, uh, good. Other other thoughts. So I would say that I would say that um, uh, just a quick note on this. If you guys are are using um, our uh, historic data, so I just want to make a note about the categories: less than thirty thousand. 30 to 60, 60 to 90. I believe this is 90 to 120. I, I think, and then this is, and then this is more than 120. I think, but I, but I, I could be wrong. I don't remember. But the point is, over time, these have shifted. So if you're looking at some of the historic stuff, we didn't always have as high a, a high end category, and so um, you just want to be cognizant cognizant of that as as you uh, as you merge things or if, if you were to merge things okay cool how about uh, visitation recreation people uh, somebody tell me somebody tell me what we what we think about this uh, figure and why why is it look good Mm -hmm. Okay, so 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 there, there's good contrast between the elements. Okay, cool. Uh, these are our different. These are our different uh, 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 areas, out, outdoor areas that we're talking about. Um, generic natural spaces, national parks, Channel Islands, and um, uh, California beaches. Uh, So how about the title? Is it is what do you guys like this title? I think they could say like people are uh, are going to natural spaces. There's something about natural spaces that daily. Was there also a skip on like the third answer the park and the beach? Right. Yeah. So okay. So. So this, uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. So this is saying that the most visits are daily and the least visits are only a few times. Is that, is that right? Okay, so, so let, me, let me think. Okay, so let me, let me look at blue. Okay, so, so blue starts, so the vast majority of people are doing daily visits. To the beach? To, for blue, yes. Yeah. I don't think that's right. I think, I think maybe, maybe you guys use the um, at least daily or whatever, emerged, uh, right? Is that maybe? That's what the data, that's what the data we're printing through so far says. Mm -hmm. we, we got it from, from the aggregate. Okay. Data. Okay. I thought there was more. I thought there were more people that were in these yeah, in these categories. Okay. Well, so we'll we'll we'll, we'll check that. But we'll check. That. Okay. But so so uh, th this guy is uh, what what uh, Plotly will do, and uh, and so this is not uh, wrong, but it it maybe is not as clean as if we just had zero, two, four, six, or or zero two comma zero 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 four comma zero 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 right that that is maybe a little more straightforward. Um, uh, yeah, other th other thoughts, other impressions. So so 
we want to interpret that with a title, right? So we want to interpret that um, and, and probably some measure of error on this as well, but cool, 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 cool. How about climate change group? I think it's our, it's our last figure. Yes, yeah, our last figure. Climate change folks. Tell me, somebody interpret this for me or what you guys think about this. Andrew, what do you think about this? Or, or let, me, let me say, take it a different way. What, what, what's the takeaway you have from this figure? Uh huh. Because they, they have like the line there with like the scatter plot. Right. It's like if the average person who doesn't look at that and doesn't know what we're doing to see that, it seems like we'd be a bit muddled and confusing. I understand what I think, I can understand what they're trying to do. But I also think having it on the same graph is confusing. Right. It's a little, a little bit hard to suss out what the, what the main takeaway is, I, I think. Yeah? That was your saying. Okay, somebody else. I, um, I like the, the idea of the uh, I'm gonna sort of disagree with the point that both of you just brought. Okay, up. cool. I, I like the idea of having the trend line above so that you can see like that the S&P 500 is changing through the year and it's trending higher, and then you can compare like the the education level to right below it. I think I just don't like having negative like, splits that you see like. Mm -hmm. during each cycle. Um, but I feel like it's one of those figures where they were trying to convey such a layered thing that it, you have to look at it for a little bit longer to actually Correct. know what's going on. So I don't know if there's a way to simplify it where someone is going to get a country that will kind of just convey the layer of confusion. Right. And so, so folks that made this, right, I, I, tell me if this is right. So this is people that said they believe in climate change and have college or or this is the fraction of people said yes that have college okay so so this is so this is of all the yes so if i add this 0.24 to this point whatever the hell it is 0.1 1 point or 0 0.1 something and this I'm going to get here, right? Just so you, did, you haven't had all the categories. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. So in that case, I would probably add the other, add the other uh, educational attainment um, uh, levels, and that, 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 would, that would make it a little bit more obvious that, that we're talking about the components. We're talking about the components of the purple line. We're, we're sort of decomposing that purple line. That would be cool. Izzy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so generally, um, so one comment is about a line. Uh, a line is, is usually used to indicate we started at condition A, either ge geographically or temporally, and then the next stop, what happened, and the next stop, and the next stop, and the next stop, right? So if this was blue hair, red hair, blonde, right? That would not be a kind of thing where we'd want to put a line between those because because they're not because the the blondness doesn't relate to the redheadedness, right? Whereas if we're talking about distance from the start of the trail, or in this case, year one, year two, year three, it is okay to put a line because we're saying like we started here and the next next assessment condition was here and here. So the line is showing us the pattern. And so, um, so this is cool. You could also have, you know, a line between these reds and, and greens, which might help a little bit with that. Might help a little bit with, with, Iz, with Izzy's um, trying to sort of draw relationship stuff. Ron. Um, and then another trick, right? So, so I think it is helpful when things are, I mean, this is not that case, but if it was a no and a yes to have a, a green and a, and a red, right? Um, 
the issue is for folks that do have color blindness, but we can get around that by adding something in addition to the red and green, right? So we could add the red could maybe be a triangle, let's say, symbol. And the green could be a square symbol or, or whatever, right? So that we still have the, the benefit for the majority of people that associate green with go and red with stop or whatever. So that they kind of have that natural association, but it's not excluding anyone. That people can still follow along um, with, with the, you know, that could be the, the line dashedness, the color of the symbol, whatever it is, just have a different one for each of those individual variables so that uh, it is distinct uh, and people can see that. Uh, Group one, group two. Jake. Yeah, so like, like the titles, uh -huh. higher education needs to hire acceptance of climate change. Like, I, you read that and then you look at the graph and it's just like, for me, it's kind of like. It's hard to see. It, yeah, it's like I'm right. trying to like reach that conclusion of the title and I just like can't. And right. Like, I think also we have like some high school, some college graduated. Does that mean like right. graduated high, high school? school right, graduated right, what? right. Like, and, uh, and so if graduated, I'm assuming that's graduated college, so that's like the highest one. Maybe that one should be like the green in, in the middle. It right. Be, like, above the other ones. Yeah, good. Can, like, show that easier. Good. So, so Jake's talking about like sort of a, a, a ranking or layering, having that be a, a more, a more na natural or a more um, logical sort of outlay with that. Um, and similarly for this, Another one I think that's causing people some confusion is this guy. And so this is educational attainment level one, educational attainment level two, level three, and this is everybody, right? So it's not so much yes to climate change, it's overall population or everyone together, right? And so by phrasing it like that, that would help people more see that it, the, the purple is related to the, the red and the green and the blue, and, and it sort of would help, help draw that um, association. Cool? And then another one, uh, also just so you guys know, uh, when you, the, how this happens, or how, how the, you know, why is the blue here, why is the red? It's usually the first thing you do. So I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna graph variable one, and I'm gonna graph variable two. So the simple way is just once you figure that out, like, oh my gosh, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do, gr you know, graduate from high school first, and then I'm gonna do some college, and then, or, or whatever it is, right? And, and then, so just by picking the order that you add them will, will help you um, there are ways to sort of adjust it after the fact, but that's the simplest way, and I would say just that's a clean way to do it. Cool. All right, great. Well, thanks, everybody. That was super cool. Um, uh, I think we're, we're starting to get the hang of it here. That's great. Um, so I'd like you guys to sort of tweak these a little bit based on comments, and then I just have an assignment up that, that you guys can submit by tomorrow, so you can submit that you know, this afternoon or, or whatever. If you're, if you're mostly happy with it, you can just tweak it a little bit. Um, but everybody has the basic stuff there, so that's cool. Sebastian? Is it random submission per group? Yes, yes. So for all these things, it's per group. So, so, so one person needs to take the lead of submitting, um, not, not, not every individual. Um, okay, before, before we take a quick uh, break to uh, switch gears here, though, I just want to... Um,